Welcome to Chapter 3 of our video series on creating REST services with OpenEdge. In this chapter, we'll create a business entity from a custom schema instead of a database table as we did in the last chapter. After we create the new business entity, we'll customize it by calling .p procedures instead of accepting the default behavior as we did in the last chapter. This section assumes that you successfully completed the exercises in Chapter 2. When you use this technique, you'll need to format the schema as a pro dataset that is defined in an include file. When we create the new business entity, we'll point to this include file instead of a database table. This is what the schema we're going to use looks like. Notice that it declares a temp table for talk and a temp table for time slot. Then it declares a pro dataset that includes both. After we let PDSOE generate the class file for this include, we'll have CRUD access to this dataset. After we test that, we'll override the default behavior of the create and read methods to call custom.p files instead of using default functionality. Open Developer Studio and make sure PassOE is running by looking to see if OEPass1 in the Servers tab says Started Synchronized. If it doesn't, start the OEPass1 server by right-clicking on it and selecting Start. Once PassOE is running, it will say Started Synchronized. Make sure you're in the Data Object Service project. Then right-click on the App Server folder and choose New Business Entity. Enter the business entity name as TalksBE as you see here. Click Next. On this screen, the operations will remain as CRUD and write data set before image will be checked. Instead of choosing a database table, we will check Select Schema from File. With that checked, click Browse and then navigate to talks underscore dataset.i in the folder Workspace Conference API Source Logic Shared. Click Open. In the lower section of this dialog, select DS Talk to make both temp tables available to the service. Then click Finish. A new file is created in the App Server folder under the project. It's called talksbe.class. This file will automatically open in the editor. Scroll down in this class and locate the data source definitions that you see here. Update the data source table values to talk and time slot. These should both be in lower case. Save the class using Control S. To make sure there are no errors, right click in the project and choose Check Syntax, and then Compile. Now we need to deploy the new class to our service. Double click on DOS under Defined Services, then click Next. Check the talksbe.cls file and click Finish. After a short time, the new service will deploy automatically in PassOE and the status will once again be Started Synchronized. To test the new service, open the Chrome browser and enter the URL you see here. There are no talks in the system right now, so you will see this response. Open Insomnia and under Mobile Requests, select Read Talks and click Send to see a list of talks. This will be the same response that we got from our test in Chrome. Choose Create Talk in Insomnia and you will see the payload under the JSON tab. Click Send to create a talk with the ID of Pro-001. Run Read Talks again and you will see that there is a new talk. Run Update Talks with a change to any of the fields other than the ID.
Notice that the response shows the old and new versions of the record because we checked Write Dataset Before Image when we created the service. Run Delete Talks to remove the record from the database. As with our previous examples, you can see that we are executing the different methods of the class by changing the HTTP verb and modifying the JSON payload. Next, we're going to override the default behavior in the TalksBE class file. In our first use case, we'll modify the default behavior so that the service will make sure that the speaker field is valid when we insert a new talk record. Validation is a common use case when customizing data object services. We will check that it matches an entry in the speaker table. To do this, we will add a call to a custom.p we wrote that will execute instead of the default behavior of the insert method. In Developer Studio, we'll update the talksbe.class file to call the customized create code. The code to call the .p is already written for you, so let's take a look at it. In the Project Explorer under Conference API, locate the file named custom1.txt under conf. Double click to open it. To customize our talksbe class file, use Ctrl A to highlight everything in this file and then press Ctrl C to copy. If it's not already open, Open talksbe.class from App Server in the Data Object Service project by double clicking it. In the Create Talksbe method, select the entire line that calls to super, then press Ctrl V to paste the new code in place. Save the file using Ctrl S. In this code, we instantiate a procedure called newtalk.p on the PassOE App Server. Once we have the handle to that procedure, we run create talk inside of it, passing in the values from the JSON body that was passed to the REST call. In the Project Explorer, find the newtalk.p procedure in the Conference API project under the Source Logic Talk folder and double click to open it. You can see here that we're using conventional ABL code, not OOABL, to create the new talk record. Inside this procedure, find the internal procedure called create talk. In this code, we first validate that the speaker ID exists in the speaker table. Then if it does, we run the procedure called new talk. New talk will create the talk record and will automatically assign the talk ID so we don't have to pass that in anymore. If the speaker does not exist, we'll return an app error object to our calling procedure and the record will not be created. We'll test both cases shortly. Right-click and choose Check Syntax and then Compile. To test this functionality, open Insomnia and choose the Create Talk call on the left list. Since we automatically create the ID now, you can delete that line from the JSON. We'll test an invalid speaker first, so modify the JSON as shown. Foo is not a valid speaker. Then click Send. You'll see an error message based on the error handling that we put in the .p. Next, change the speaker value to a valid speaker, ABL-010, and click Send, and you'll get a valid inserted talk. Use Read Talks to validate that the talk record was inserted. Make note of the ID that was automatically assigned. To update, choose Update Talk and change the ID to the ID that was automatically assigned to the record when we created it. This will be a NON dash and some number. You can change other fields in the JSON if you want to test the update. Delete the talk using Delete Talk and changing the ID to match the one shown when we created and updated the talk record. When we use our call to read talks, we see the speaker's ID instead of their name. Next, we'll create custom logic to substitute the speaker's name for their ID when this service is called with the read verb. 
Open the file called custom2.txt in the Conference API project under conf. Copy the code by pressing Ctrl-A and then Ctrl-C. Back in the talks.be class file, locate the read talks.be method and paste the code there, overwriting the call to super, so that it looks like this. You'll see that this instantiates a .p named readtalks.p and then calls the procedure in it called get filtered talks. Open this file in the folder under conference API source logic talk by double clicking on it. Save all files and then execute project clean to rebuild the entire environment. In Insomnia, if you deleted all of the talk records, execute create talk to create one. Run read talks and you'll see the speaker's name appears instead of their ID code. So in this chapter, we created a new business entity using the data object service from a pro data set instead of a database table. We deployed the service to pass OE and we tested. We also saw how to override the default behavior of the service for the create and read methods by calling custom.p files. Then we did more service testing using our REST client tool. In the next chapter, we'll take a look at how to create REST services using a web handler instead of a data object service. This is a different way to create REST services, which will give you more control over what happens when the service is invoked with different URL strings. We'll continue to test each service as we create it.